The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet was the longest-running live-action sitcom in U.S. TV history. That is, until It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia took that title in 2021. The show ran for 14 years, from 1952 to 66, and it was a staple of American pop culture. It got its start on the radio in 1944, which means that the Nelsons spent over two decades playing themselves in front of an audience, while blurring the lines between fiction and reality. Ozzy and Harriet were America's quintessential TV couple in the 1950s. Ozzy could be a bit of a goof, never seemed to hold a job, and was always loafing around in their two-story colonial home, seemingly only ever leaving the house to get ice cream. Harriet, on the other hand, could always be seen wearing an apron and never seemed to find herself away from the kitchen. While the primary cast members of The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet may no longer be with us, over the years, those remaining of the cast and crew have shared a wealth of information about what the Nelsons were really like when the cameras weren't rolling. Join Facts First as we explore the dark, true history of The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet cast. Harriet was previously married. Born Peggy Lou Snyder in Des Moines, Iowa, Harriet grew up in a theatrical family. She made her acting debut at age three, appearing on the vaudeville stage. By the time she was 13, she was already appearing on Broadway, smoking cigarettes, and spending a great deal of time around folks much older than she was. After finding herself in the New York club scene, she dropped out of high school. She joined the corps de ballet at the Capitol Theater before dancing in the Harry Carroll Review and working as a straight woman with comedians Burt Lahr and Ken Murray. In the late 20s, Harriet met comedian Roy Sedley at the Cotton Candy Nightclub in New York. They got married in 1930, but separated the following year. Allegedly, Sedley was very abusive to young Harriet. And in 1933, their marriage was officially annulled. Harriet met Ozzy in 1932 while she was performing in vaudeville. Ozzy played the saxophone and was the leader of a band called the Ozzy Nelson Orchestra. Not long after meeting her, Ozzy invited Harriet to join the band as a singer. The two promptly began dating, and not long after, in 1935, they got married. Their undeniable chemistry helped Ozzy's band find success and eventually made them one of America's favorite couples for decades. Ozzy's band went on to be featured in several feature films and short subjects in the 1940s. A few of their earliest big screen moments were in musicals like Sweetheart on the Campus, Take It Big, Strictly in the Groove, and Honeymoon Lodge. Ozzy and Harriet also made appearances as independent characters in films like High Good Lookin', but it was their work in broadcasting that ultimately led to them becoming superstars. In the 1950s, Ozzy and Harriet became regular guests on The Red Skelton Show, a legendary comedy and variety show. This laid the foundation for them to create their own show, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Before we tell you more about that, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Ozzy was apprehensive to put his kids on the radio. A year after Ozzy and Harriet exchanged wedding vows, they welcomed a bouncing boy named David. Four years later, Harriet gave birth to a second son, Eric Hilliard, better known as Ricky. The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet radio program premiered in 1944. At first, Ozzy wasn't so sure that his kids were ready to play themselves. So while he groomed them for their future in the spotlight, two voice actors were brought in to play David and Ricky. While these were two talented voice artists, Ozzy thought it was important to keep things in the family. So when David was 12 and Ricky was 8, they began performing alongside their parents. It was actually thanks to the late great crooner Bing Crosby that Ozzy was convinced the boys were ready for their moment in the limelight. Bing encouraged Ozzy to give the brothers their big break after he guest starred on the program. While it's undeniable that the show launched the Nelson boys' respective careers, Ozzy has been accused of greedily selling out his son's childhood. He's even been described as dictatorial by some of his former setmates. It was all make-believe. In the book The Fifties by David Halberstam, the author addressed the impact that the show had on the boys. Halberstam asserts that David and Ricky were constantly under a lot of pressure from their father. As such, he claims that Ozzy basically robbed the boys of their childhood to make a buck. Ozzy would apparently even take his family's most intimate and personal moments and make them public on the show. So in a way, the Nelsons were one of America's first reality TV families. But just as reality TV shows today are far from being real, much of what the Nelsons could be seen doing was also very contrived. Despite the fact that the series was set in a replica of their Hollywood home, the Nelson family were hardly the same people they played on TV. Ricky became the first teen idol. 
When Ricky was 17, he began his singing career. The expression teen idol was first coined to describe him. His fame as both a TV star and recording artist led to him being cast in the 1959 Western film Rio Bravo alongside Dean Martin, John Wayne, and Angie Dickinson. Between 1958 and 73, he put out 53 songs that made the Billboard Hot 100, 10 of which topped the top 10. Around the time he began appearing in films, he started dating football legend Tom Harmon's daughter, Kristen Harmon. The two married in what Ricky would later describe as a shotgun wedding two years later while Kristen was pregnant. To keep their squeaky clean public image, the couple kept the pregnancy a secret. The truth, however, became very clear when Kristen gave birth six months later. Ricky and Kristen later ran into some serious marital problems. They almost divorced in 1975 after Ricky was found in their home with two cheerleaders, but they decided to patch things up and give it another go. But they finally separated again and finalized their divorce in 1982. Just three years later, Ricky and six others were killed when his private plane crashed in a patch of woods near Dallas, Texas. Illegal substance use was initially blamed for their deaths, but it has since been confirmed that the cause of the crash was the onboard heater catching fire. After his death, Ricky's ex-wife turned to hard drugs to cope. Their youngest son, Sam, got caught in the middle of this challenging situation and eventually called his uncle, Mark Harmon, for help. This led to a long, drawn-out custody battle, but Sam ultimately went back to living with his mother after spending time with his uncle. Fortunately, Kristen did eventually go to rehab and got clean, while the rest of the family agreed to attend family therapy sessions. Ozzy's lengthy cancer battle Ozzy always prioritized his health and fitness. He used to swim two miles a day in the Pacific Ocean, and he never drank nor smoked cigarettes. So it was rather unexpected when he started to suffer from malignant tumors. For years, he kept fighting, but when he was diagnosed with liver cancer in 1974, he was informed by his doctor he wouldn't have much time left to live. After having an unsuccessful surgery that did little to improve his condition, Ozzy made peace with his terminal prognosis. Six months later, while surrounded by his wife and two sons in his home in the San Fernando Valley, Ozzy died at age 69. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these stories was the most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Faxverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.